University. They don't tailgate, they sailgate on the banks and on the Brazos River in the shadows of McLean Stadium. It's homecoming weekend, reflections turn to football folklore. And it all began with Robert Griffin III, the prodigal son back home on homecoming weekend. A great time to see where they've immortalized and commemorated his great football performances. Welcome everyone to ESPN College Football here delivered by Papa John's. It's BYU and Baylor at five and one. Both teams in this mid-season non-conference classic. And what a day it's been so far. Uh, Robert, it's been a special weekend for you to come back to McLean Stadium and uh, see a lot of old familiar faces and, and relive a few things. We have definitely felt the love all week, and, and I can tell you what, it's just so good for my family, right? They, they haven't been around this before, so to come back for homecoming was just like the perfect storm, and, you know, I'm beyond grateful to ESPN and everybody involved with uh, having us call this game. It's going to be a blast. Folks, we've got a real special treat for you. I'm not overselling this. Part of the great tradition here at Baylor University is the Baylor line, the sprint by students at the start of the game. We'll show it to you in a few. Edner on the return off the BYU kick. And it comes out to the 20 yard line, first down and 10, where Gary Bohannon will take the reins of this offense. The 6'3 junior has completed 66% of his passes this season, 11 touchdown tosses, zero interceptions. Look at those numbers from a week ago four touchdown tosses. 336 yards. He is on a wave like Rod right now. He is rolling. He is red hot coming into this game, bouncing back with a fantastic win against West Virginia. First and 10 from the 19 yard line. The RPO, he pulls it out, pass complete up to the 24 yard line. That's RJ Sneed. Dave Aranda, two and seven last year, already at five and one this year, authoring one of the great turnarounds in college football. Keep in mind that Aranda didn't get to visit with his team last year until the beginning of August, in person, that is, because of the pandemic. And he's gotten real familiar and implemented great systems on both sides of the football. Second down and four. Bohannon well, has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down coming up as uh, the BYU Cougars try and bounce back from losing last week against Boise State. Kalani Sataki, their head coach in his sixth season on the sidelines at BYU, former fullback at BYU, and 5-1 and one coming into this one. Has his team in a good position. Treston Ebner in the backfield on third down and four. Backside pressure on Bohannon downfield and incomplete. Good heat up front. As they just almost got to Bohannon, that was Tyler Batty, the freshman, delivering a blow. You know, right here, all they do is they bring more than the offensive line can block. And right there, if, the, if Batty wouldn't have hit Gary Bohannon, he had Drew Estrada one on one down the field and could have given him a better ball. But because of the pressure, he wasn't able to deliver an accurate pass. Welcome everyone to McLean Stadium here at the campus of Baylor University. Baylor is going to go three and out. BYU about to receive this punt from Isaac Power. Hobbs Nyberg watches it bounce. And it rolls all the way inside the 30. Keeps going to about the 22-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from there for the BYU Cougars. An independent with first and 10. 53 yards on that punt. Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Robert Griffin. Quint Kesnick down in the field. He'll be joining us in just a bit. I'm not going to tell you why my partner is still huffing and puffing. He just got back up to the booth a few moments ago. The Baylor line has something to do with it. But Robert, tell us about your keys to this football game. Yeah, so this game is going to be all about fourth down. Both of these teams like to go for it on fourth down, so it's going to affect how the defense is called what they do. We talk about the skill matchups. These wide receivers from BYU love to catch these 50-50 balls. It's going to be a battle with those guys all game long. Against a secondary that starts four talented seniors complete to 
Pau. Let's go downstairs to Quint. These teams will have a lot in common, Quint. Well, they are mirror images of one another, whether it's the coaching style, the offensive style of play, and that, a lot of that has to do with Jeff Grimes. Three years he was the offensive coordinator at BYU. He is the current offensive coordinator at Baylor. You're going to see the same formations, the same motions, the same NFL passing routes. You're going to see the same trick plays and the same fourth down mentality. Well, they're going to run it here with Algier, who's been a workhorse in the backfield for them. Takes it out to about the 29 yard line. Randolph making the tackle. Algier has run for 637 yards coming into the ball game. Because of Grimes, both teams have had to uh, switch things up a little bit in terms of protecting their corporate knowledge, so to speak. They call him grimy. BYU's been calling him <laughs> grimy all week, and they've all had to change signals and everything to make sure that the other side doesn't know exactly what they're doing. Third and three for Jaron Hall. There's a look at the quarterback as healthy as he's been since the beginning of the season. Algier is going to be stopped up, moves the pile for about a yard. Cole Maxwell making the tackle. It's a one yard gain, and both teams will go three and out on their opening possessions of this football game. Ryan Rico comes in to punt to Treston Ebner, who is set up around his own 20 yard line. For our viewers at home, you see both of these offenses come out and go three and out. And that's why today is not going to be about the coaches. It's going to be a player driven game because both sides have so much familiarity with one another. Who's going to step up big and make the place for the team? Edgar, a dangerous kick returner and punt returner. Boy, what a kick by Rico. Airmails one. Fair catch called all the way at the 18 yard line by Edner. He launched that one 52 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears on homecoming weekend here in Waco. Back after this. This is college football delivered by Papa John's. Folks, you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN on a beautiful sun splash day here in Central Texas. Look at the respective quarterbacks, Gary Bohannon, Jaron Hall, a couple of guys that come in red hot. Hall threw for over 300 yards last week, albeit in that loss against Boise State. Bohannon, meanwhile, with a career high over 330 yards, 336 to be precise. Four touchdown tosses in their win against West Virginia, bouncing back after losing the previous week against Oklahoma State. First down and 10 from the 19. They're going to hand it off to Abram Smith. And Smith moves the pile beyond the 25 to about the 26 yard line. Pick up of seven on the play. Smith, a 5'11 senior. Robert, we were talking about how he's a good fit for this uh, RVO offense of Jeff Grimes, who we've talked about. RVO standing for reliable, violent offense. Yes, these running backs are violent guys. And Abram Smith used to be a linebacker. And uh, <laughs> why not be violent? Ebner in the backfield. Bohannon into traffic. Caught by Ben Sims in traffic. He beat Mandel for the football, went up and made a play on it. First down. You watch this right here. Gary Bahannon's just going to drop back. And this is what is the benefit of being a big receiver like Ben Sims is at 6'4", 253 pounds. The corner just can't get through him to get to the football. So Gary puts the ball where he can make a play, and Ben Sims makes him right. Down to the 46-yard line, first down and 10. Smith back in the ball game, little play fake. Bohannon incomplete. Threw it away. He'll live to see another play. It'll be second down and 10. Good pressure by Ben Bywater of BYU. Kalani Sataki, the head coach, former fullback at BYU. Also coached at various places around the West Coast. Oregon State, one of his later stops. His philosophy is really for uh, his players to love on each other. That's what he saw in wake of that disappointment last week after they took the L against Boise State. Taylor comes in with a fullback. They run a little lead play. That was Abram Smith picking up about four. It'll set up third down for the Bears. 
When we talk about Kalani Sataki and the love and learning, as he called it, and that philosophy of building relationships and, and understanding the feel of your team is really no different than what Dave Miranda's doing over at Baylor. And as we talk about throughout the day, there's a lot of mirror images on both sides of the ball for both of these teams. It's really the antithesis of your old school hardcore football coach. Doing it a different way and successful with it. Incomplete dropped by Abram Smith. And it sets up a fourth down on the fringes of field goal range for Isaiah Hankins, who has a long of 48. And it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and six. What do you make of that, partner? Oh, I'm not surprised at all. We talked about it. Fourth down is a down that both of these offenses like to use. So here we are. Buckle up. Yep. They're in the opponent's territory. They're going to go for it on fourth down. See if they can stop them. 11 to 14 on the season in fourth down conversion situations. They got a trip right formation here. Bohannon down the middle. Caught. What a grab at the 23 yard line. Another one in traffic. This one by R.J. Sneed. He was working against Malik Moore and came away with it. Boy, the Baylor receivers, Robert, battling for that football here. We talked about it in the beginning. It's those 50-50 balls on both sides, and R.J. Sneed said, all right, man, I got you. Just put it in my vicinity. I will make you right. They run a traditional uh, three vertical concept there for uh, NFL offenses with a sit outside. Gary Mahanen sees it, delivers it. Wow, what a play. Smith in the backfield on first down and 10 after the conversion on four. From the little zone play to the edge. Caught a crease. And pushed out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Abram Smith. Well, now for today's AFLAC trivia question. Gary Bohannon Affleck. is one of two fullbacks, FBS, pardon me, quarterbacks with 1,000 passing yards and no interception. Who's the other one? Wow, that, that's a great question. You want me to answer now? Yeah, <laughs> hey, I feel I feel let good about this. Let, let that marinate a little bit. Man. Give hey, somebody man. else a chance. <laughs> First and ten. Run it between the tackles. Smith again picks up about three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Tanuvasa making the tackle alongside Wilgar. Bohannon is red hot coming into this football game. A guy that has really worked on his deep passing game and shown a lot of proficiency and improvement in that area. On second and eight. Edner and Smith in the backfield. They give it to Smith. And Smith going to be pushed back. Not much of a gain. Lost a tire on the play. Blew a tire. Gain of one with his forward progress. It's BYU defense. And the defensive coordinator, Elisa Tuiaki, talked about defensively limiting rushes to three or fewer yards or passes to six or fewer yards. They did that last week, but it was the turnovers that did in BYU. Third and seven. They're going to run a pick up to Bohannon on a keeper. He's a strong runner. With seven and a half minutes to go. Batty making the tackle. Fourth down coming up. They converted on fourth down last time. They're 12 of 15 on the season in such situation. Fourth and five. This BYU defense has had an uncanny ability all year to bend but not break. And you see that here on fourth down. Baylor saying we trust our defense if we don't get it, but we also trust our offensive guys to punch this in, see if they can get it done. Keep an eye on Tyquan Thornton. He's the tall 6'3 receiver. They look the other way over the middle in traffic, and it's picked off in the end zone by Wilgar. Peyton Wilgar with the interception with Baylor on the doorstep. A blown opportunity for the Bears on a very otherwise impressive drive. That's BYU's seventh interception of the season, and they'll have it first and ten coming back the other way when we return.
ESPN College Football is delivered by the Shakaroni from Papa John's Pizza with a Purpose. Order today. And in part by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. Look at John Westbrook, the first black athlete to play in the Southwest Conference during his time at Baylor, folks, as a student athlete in 1965. Sadly, passing away at the age of 36 in 1983. And right now at the helm of the offense, Jaron Hall completes the pass to his tight end, Isaac Rex. And speaking of first, Jaron Hall is the first black quarterback ever to start at BYU. And he is uh, incredible in terms of uh, his ability to be able to uh, take pride, he says, uh, of his ancestors, his ethnicity. He says that he puts an emphasis on being a better person every day and the importance of uh, having conversations with people about differences. On a little flea flicker, nowhere to go. Well, Baylor had a difference of opinion there as they sack him in the backfield. Petrie. Going to set up a second and long. It's a nice job. You're going to see Jalen Petrie off the edge. Comes in, attacks the quarterback at the legs, gets him down, almost gets a fumble there. But when you talk about Jaron Hall, he's a man with many responsibilities on his shoulders, right? First black quarterback at BYU to start. He's married. He's got a daughter. He he told me yesterday a lot of great things, and hopefully we'll be able to share those with you later on in the broadcast. Second and 22. Patola. Let's go back to the studio. Third and long. Algier running that stretch play and getting out beyond the 25 to about the 26 yard line picks up five but once again BYU will have to punt so Baylor going to get decent field position when they take possession here Ebner back to receive this punt you know when you ask the question about why did Baylor go for it there on fourth down the, the, the analytics probably tell them because this is going to be a limited possession game to go ahead and go for it. And if your, your defense is you have them backed up, they can't get out of there. The problem is they threw an interception, but luckily the defense stepped up big and they're going to get the ball back in great field position here. Rico had a 52 yard punt on his first one. This one comes down at the 34. It'll be first and 10 after that 40 yard punt. 418 to go in the first quarter. On homecoming weekend, when we come back on the other side, you might have heard of the Baylor line, but you've never seen it run like it was run before this game. We'll have the video and who was in it. That's right. <laughs> come on. They call it the Baylor line here, where new students run onto the field, form a line, and look at my partner there, Robert Griffin III and his lovely bride, Grete, running with the students, and Robert with some late closing speed and dipping at the tape to get the win. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just glad you didn't pull a hamstring down there, but that was great closing speed, and then getting away from the, uh, the adoring crowd here, too, afterwards, Robert. That hey. was amazing. Uh, listen, that was an, an amazing experience, can't lie. But I'm sitting here, and right, I'm, I'm, this is me, this is my wife, and then there's this one guy way over there. And yeah. I'm back here, I'm looking for my wife, I'm like, where's my wife at? And then I see this guy at the last second out of my peripheral, and I'm like, you know what? I gotta win this race. Oh. Let's have some closing oh. speed. Oh, oh. knee drive, oh. knee drive, dip, oh. got him! <laughs> oh, he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. Look like Trayvon Bramell on their clothes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Smith with the catch off the tip. But what a great tradition when you think about all the wonderful traditions of college football. Uh, Script Ohio dotting the I, the Jackson State band playing Get Ready, Here We Come. Uh, jump around at the University of Wisconsin at the end of the third quarter. I mean, so many great things to be loved about college football. And uh, this 
the Baylor line one of them. Bohannon completes the pass to Sneed for the first down. Quint. That young student is going to be looking at a walk on tryout. He looks like he could be a slot corner or maybe a slot. <laughs> and I do have the GPS info that we attached oh, to Robert that oh. we can send around to some NFL GMs. There you go. Who may be looking for a QB for a little October, November run. Yeah. Hey, he, he was hey, moving man. him in the mid 20s at least, Q. Uh, at know? least in the Dolce Gabbana suit, too. The tape don't lie. The tape don't lie, guys. <laughs> Bohannon back to pass. Wide open again, it's R.J. Sneed, and he hurdles the defender inside the 20-yard line. Well, Bohannon threw his first touch, pardon me, interception a moment ago. As we go back to the Aflac trivia question, he's one of two FBS quarterbacks with 1,000 yards passing, no interceptions. Aflac. Who's the other? I know all, ba all of Baylor Nation is going to say that's the Aflac curse. You curse the guy. <laughs> Got me into a, maybe into a pick, but I'm going to say it's Matt Corral, Ole Miss. There you go. Got it. From the 17 after that 24 yard pickup. Sims and Dabney, a couple of tight ends set to the right. Bohannon into the end zone. Incomplete. Jarred loose by Malik Moore at the last moment. Sims had it temporarily, but couldn't squeeze it. Oh, and put it right there, Robert. Oh, he what a great throw. They do a nice little scissor concept there, and he gets the post. And we saw this early on the, on a previous possession. Ben Sims caught a contested pass, and we, we put this in the keys before. These 50-50 balls where you got to play through contact and make tough catches, those are going to decide the game. And right there, Ben Sims did not make the play for his guy. Second and 10 from the 17. Bohannon going to pass again. Incomplete. Knocked away again by Max Tooley this time. And it'll be third down and 10. Well, if you're judging it based off their last possession, you would say, hey, maybe they're going to try to go for it on four, so they try to get half of it here. But I think on this one, you got to okay. try to get the first down. And if you don't kick the field goal, take the points, your defense is playing amazing. I haven't heard from Taekwon Thornton yet, a guy that had a big week last week, and Drew Estrada also targeted a lot in the last several weeks. That's him in motion to the bottom of your screen. Third and ten. Bohannon got it out a little bit late, complete to Sneed again, but it's short of that first down. Picks up a couple, maybe three. What do you do on fourth down here? And in comes yeah, the kick field the field goal. goal. Kick okay. the field goal. Like I said before, you, you went for it last time. You know, they're they're not in a it's fourth down and it's beyond five yards. Hey, kick the field goal, take the points, just trust your kicker's gonna make it and lean on that defense. Penn State's got a I mean uh, BYU's gotta show you that they can make plays on offense before you start taking those type of gambles every single time with your offense out there. Isaiah Hankins is six of seven on the season, along with forty eight. This one coming from thirty one. Well within his range. And he fits it inside that left upright. To give Baylor a 3 0 lead with 111 to go in the first quarter. Well, on College Football Saturday lineup on ABC and the ESPN app is capped off by what should be another good one, number four Oklahoma against TCU in our Saturday night game presented by Capital One, 7 30 Eastern on ABC. Robert, I want to go back to that run. Had you ever seen it like that before? What was it like to actually feel it down on the field with the fans? As we talked about in previous weeks, if you don't know, now you know right. that we are all about full immersion in the experience here with the different colleges. So I've always heard about the Baylor line when I was when I played here and I never got a chance to really see them and I never got a chance to obviously run with them. Right. That was incredible. The energy that they have and that they bring to the games, you see them over there uh, in the stands is phenomenal. Right. It's the freshmen, all newcomers to the university get these jerseys, get a chance to run on the field and you know, it was a dream come true. Can't even lie. Awesome. Awesome stuff. I know your lovely bride is a national team athlete, too. She had a nice stride out there, man. Yeah, man. But she, those, she was closing on you a little bit. Hey, she was closing, and she had those leather, <laughs> she had those leather pants on, too. It's like, what is this, grease? Come on, man. <laughs> Into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 from the 25 for Jaron Hall, who... Robert had a chance to sit down with in our QB or not to be QB question.
you're the first black quarterback in BYU history, right? How does that, do you, do you carry that with you? Is that like a, a badge of honor? Is that a sign of the times? It was an honor. You know, I, I do try to wear it on my, my heart and really love and enjoy it. And just to take that appreciation out of the field and how I play, how I prepare, and just how, how I respect the game and try to do every week, you know. Awesome stuff. His father played at BYU as well. He hands it off to Algier for a gain of a few. Let's go down to Q. As you said, his dad, Kalen, was a running back. His mom was on the gymnastics team at BYU. What you'll notice is a smooth release, and he's got great speed when he can scramble. But he's had rib injuries throughout his career. He had some concussions back in 2019. He's only making his seventh career start today. This is a young man who a lot of people compare to Russell Wilson. Mm. Could be a Sunday player someday. Wow. Former baseball player, too, on the BYU baseball team. There's the Russell Wilson connect. Yeah. Tremendous athlete, second down and eight from the 27. Hall takes a shot deep on the post. Got a man caught and still on his feet. Nakua got in behind Tejeda. There's a look at that arm strength, a 52-yard gain. Oh, yeah, Jaron Hall, we just talked about him, and here's another 50-50 ball. Puka Nakua goes up and makes the play on Raleigh Tejada. It's just one of those things. They're going to challenge them down the field. This Baylor defense is one of the most efficient pass defenses in the country. BYU coming in here said, we're going to challenge that. Right there, they won that battle. Baylor's got to make sure they don't break and give them seven here. That's going to be one of the great matchups. This is the end and storylines as this afternoon progresses. That's going to be the end of the first 15 minutes. BYU trying to get back on the winning track. Kalani Sataki in his sixth year looking for the bounce back win. And my partner with an education in acceleration here, the Baylor line. Oh, Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come on, baby. It's the leather pants. <laughs> Power days can welcome back everyone to McLean Stadium here on the banks of the Brazos River. Baylor leading three nothing. BYU with a football just outside the red zone. They're going to run it with Algier, and he stopped up for little or no gain by Matt Jones. What a great story Algier is. Former linebacker, former walk-on. A couple of years ago, in wake of the Hawaii Bowl, when he was suddenly switched from linebacker to running back. Had a couple of successful carries, came back to campus. He had been working at Walmart, looking to make a few dollars to put in his pocket. And then the coach in January, a few days later, came and awarded him a scholarship. One of the great stories on this BYU squad this year. Pass complete. And nowhere to go for Isaac Rex. Yes, down by Petrie. Tyler Algier's got an incredible story, but he's also got chops on the defensive side. You said he used to play linebacker. <laughs> Here he is against Arizona State. And is that is that Tyler Algier or is that DK Metcalf? Look at him. Ba -da. Get the ball out. Hustle play. You know what? God loves effort. And right there, he's loving Tyler Algier. <laughs> A whole lot, baby. Man. Closed on him, went airborne, punched it loose. And then you saw Jaron Hall there to recover the fumble. This is a squad that has beaten three Pac-12 teams in the first three games of their season. Third and seven. Pass complete. And then some to Pau. And he's inside the five, actually just outside the five, first and goal on the 12-yard game. Yes, man, this is incredible. You see Neil Pau right there. This this BYU receiving core might be the best four of any in the country. They all can make they're all big physical targets. And that, it seems like they're going to keep trying to challenge Baylor in the passing game because right now with two of their starting offensive linemen out at right guard and right tackle, uh, they're all, they're, they're, their run game is not really running that well. And Tyler Algier has been a little quiet today. So I'd still look for them to continue to try to throw the ball over the place. All is six for six on the waggle. And he throws it out of bounds, incomplete. That's his first incompletion of the football game. Good pressure by Garmin Randolph for Baylor. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah, great mention there, Robert. 
talking about the offensive line for BYU missing a couple of starters on the right side at right guard and right tackle tackle Lachance one of their big guys up front so depth a little bit of an issue on the offensive line for the Cougars this afternoon. The Cougars or should I say what the Sailor Cougars it today because they got that little patch on their helmet. They do not want any of their offensive linemen to go go down because they don't have much depth behind it. All completes it out of the backfield. Algier tiptoes. Did not get into the end zone. They're going to mark it at the one yard line just inside the one yard line. So it'll be third down and goal on the gain of five. Yeah, right here, the ball's got across the plane. He tries to jump up and get the foot inside the pylon. The ball does not cross, but it, it appears that they might be reviewing this. Oh, that's a very a bit distorted angle from there for us. Third and goal. Wake in motion. Algiers. Touchdown, Cougars! No question about that one Tyler Algier. With the game's first touchdown for the Cougars his ninth of the season 22nd of his career. You know sometimes they don't care how you get down there and who gets the touchdown but right here. Oh my look at that block right there by Mason Wake who has missed the past couple games but they are so excited to have him back because of his versatility and what he's able to do. And Tyler Algier gets to benefit off of that offense going down the field and gets a rushing touchdown. Wake at 250 pounds uh, <laughs> made himself a pancake there as BYU takes a 73 lead. You see right here, Jaron Hall comes down, throw, delivers a bomb shot to Puka Nakua. And then what happens next? Tyler Algier rides the wave, the block of Mason Wake, and gets the touchdown. Beautiful. <laughs> well, Sunday NFL countdown, Randy Moss ranking the week's best catches on You Got Moss, plus the latest on undefeated Cardinals. will be without their head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, as he's can, uh, got COVID as they take on the Cleveland Browns. Kick off your Sunday morning with Countdown at 10 on ESPN. Look at some of the great scenery around the house that Robin Robert Griffin III built, a.k.a. McLean Stadium. Listen, not definitely not the house that I built. Hey. There are a lot of people that, that went into making this thing work. And hey, I'm going to keep it a buck, okay? <laughs> a lot of money went in the coffers during and in the wake of your career here. So all this I, thing didn't happen by accident here. There was, some wonder, there was some wonderful philanthropy along the way. <laughs> Imagine if NIL would have been around back then. Hey, maybe you can get some retroactive stuff. I was huh? wondering if that could happen. Maybe we should continue <laughs> talking about it. And Baylor will hear. <laughs> Ebner in the backfield on first down and 10 for Baylor, trailing 7-3. Take the jet sweep, run it into the boundary. That's Edner. Nice gain close to the first down. Edner picks up 10. Robert Griffin III immortalized, commemorated here in stone under the sun. What was it like when you, when you, when you look at that, when you walk by? I had a chance to, we took pictures by it today. It's pretty amazing, man. It's it's I, I don't even know how to describe it, but what I can what I can say is when I see that that uh, statue, I see all of my teammates, my offensive linemen who got no praise uh, during that year. Without them, we didn't have that. It's going to be Ebner again, this time on the right side of that offensive line. Gains four out to the 39. Ebner is the fastest of the tailbacks they have in the stable. Fifth year senior provides a lot of the juice on and off the field for this group. He's accepted the challenge this year to be a little bit more physical. And the coaches uh, see him as a great compliment to Smith. They call him Thunder and Lightning. I'll let you guess who's like. He's going to be Alvin Kamara type. Second and six. Pass complete for the first time today. Thornton with the grab and the first down. He had a big week last week. Well. They've paid so much love to you, but 
Robert, what happened? <laughs> Look at the letter there. What, what happened, bro? Listen, it's RG3, right not G3. Here, I guess they said I'm the OG3. I don't know what it is, but they definitely messed up the name. But they got my wife's name right, and that all that mattered. That's all that matters in the household. <laughs> OG3. Smith piercing the line, lacerating that defense and inside the 20. Malik Moore finally pushing him out of bounds. We're talking about OGs up here, and I can tell you right now, BYU's defense, when they saw Abram Smith going right here through this massive hole, look at that. Offensive line doing a great job. They said, oh, God, we don't want to tackle that guy. Somebody please push him out of bounds. Big run, the biggest one of the game for Baylor. Estrada in motion into the boundary. Handed off to Smith this time. That's the uh, Thunder portion of the Lightning and Thunder. Picks up about three. Smith, as we mentioned, a converted defensive back slash linebacker. Aranda approached him in the spring about moving back to the tailback position. He's been very productive. Team's leading rusher coming into the game at almost 600 yards on the season. Ebner back in. It'll be second down. I want everyone to remember that BYU sees this offense every single day when they're running against their own. Can they stop it? That's the question. Nice cutback by Ebner. And it's going to set up a third down at about three and a half. Thule making the tackle, the common denominator. Jeff Grimes, the orchestrator of this RVO offense. The acronym for reliable, violent offense and attacking multiple formation multiple look style of play on the offensive side third and three they like to say they run a few plays many different ways who doesn't like a good run they're going to hand it off got the first down and Moore still going Smith still on his feet got a little help from his friends touchdown Bears You can tell these boys want to play today and they want to win. Phenomenal job by Abram Smith. Running with physicality, getting to the goal line, and just as it looked like he wasn't going to score, his buddies carried him and pushed him into the end zone. These Baylor Bears are ready to fight in the back of the lead. Eighth rushing touchdown of the season for Smith, the ninth of his career, capping an impressive drive. An extra point to come from Hankins. A great response by Gary Bohannon who threw that touch that interception his first interception of the season earlier but showing a lot of resilience on that 75 yard drive eclipsing 323 on the clock. Days. Hey y'all, Chip and Joanna Gaines here. Everybody knows the houses that we built, but let me show you the house that Robert Griffin III built. Welcome home, Robert. Oh, welcome home, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Sorry. Good Sorry morning. about Chip. that. Hey. hey, don't get hit. Hey, there's so much affection for my partner here at Baylor University. Here in Waco, what a great last couple of days it's been, and uh, an enthusiastic crowd. Doug, what's been the best part of your return so far? Yeah, really just seeing the smile on my family's face. Right. Um, the love has definitely been felt. They know when I'm here in this booth, I have to be bipartisan and call the game as we see it. But it's been phenomenal to be here, and thank you to everybody for what they've done. All right, it'll be first and 10 from the 25 for BYU. Let's go back to the studio. Right, what about Cincinnati this week moving up to number three? BYU also part of that 
group of five. A long shot downfield by Hall, and it's caught. Nakua got in behind Tejada, his second reception of the day. This one good for 50 yards. Puka it. Nakua just, I just saw him tap his helmet. And normally when you see a guy tap his helmet, it means, hey, I'm tired of taking out right. the game. But he was signaling to his sideline, hey, I got a mismatch. Okay. I, hey, I got a mismatch. That's the second he, time, Robert. He, that, yeah. He, the second time that he's beat Raleigh Tata there, and Tata's got to tighten up. They're going to keep attacking him if he cannot cover Puka Nakua. Passing again, going back the same way. Incomplete. As Nakua tried to reach behind him to make another spectacular grab. Quint, what did you see? I see a lot of confidence from this BYU receiving core. They like some of their matchups on the outside. That was a situation where that ball was underthrown. He dusted them within the first five yards and had to wait up for that ball. So they, they are liking what they are seeing on the outside. A couple of brothers Puka Nakua and his brother Samson Nakua, number 45. A couple of talented wideouts for the Cougars, second down and 10 from the Baylor 30. Algier runs it to about the 27. As our guy Q said, he dusted him. And Puka Nakua slowed up, played the ball in the air. That's why he plays receiver. DBs play DB. But right now, like you said, that BYU feels really confident with their matchups outside. And Baylor has to do something. These players have to do something to make their confidence go down. Otherwise, they're going to keep targeting them and keep them to getting big plays. Looking at a third down. BYU has to get to the 20 to pick up the first. Hall going to be sacked back at the 33. The pressure came right up the middle for the Baylor Bears defensively. And Ron Roberts, the defensive coordinator, pressed the right button that time, and they get a nice sack. Oh, yeah, they do a nice little twist game here on the outside, and it gets the guy free. And Jaron Hall didn't have a chance. Guy... Guys, interior pressure does not allow the quarterback to get out and do what he wants to do, getting jiggy out there on the field. Amazing job by Baylor's defense of corralling him. 7-13 to go in the first half. The Bears with a big defensive play. Fourth down coming up when we return. And welcome back, everyone, to McLean Stadium. BYU going to try and kick this field goal from 50 yards out. Jake Oldroyd has a career long of 49. Gets it up in the air, but it looks like he hooks it left. So they miss an opportunity, had plenty of distance. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Bears. College football Saturday lineup on ABC and ESPN app capped off by what should be another good one. Number four Oklahoma against TCU in our Saturday night game presented by Capital One 730 Eastern on ABC. Great menu of games there. Oh yeah. Oklahoma who's the quarterback. Hey what a comeback last week. Still getting over that instant classic that comeback against Texas. And they got to go up against a stable of backs at mm -hmm. TCU. First down and 10 for the Bears just outside the 30 pass complete Bohannon Thornton stays on his feet wrestling forward for the first down Tyquan Thornton 6 3 senior out of the Magic City Miami Florida had a nice game against West Virginia in that win last week at a Booker T Washington High School in Miami Florida great program down there and the shadows of the old Orange Bowl. Yeah, when Tyquan Tyquan Thornton's on and, the, and getting the ball, this offense is even more dangerous. They cannot get it to him enough. Preston Ebner in the backfield. Thornton with plenty of time has a man wide open. That Sims still on his feet and upended at about the 35 by Caleb Hayes, and it's another Baylor first down, a gain of 22. I just love the way Gary Bohannon went through his progressions there, got down to his third or fourth uh, person in the progression, and made that play. He has time and time again shown everybody. You see the progression. He goes from across the field, down the seam, to the, to the goal ball on the outside. Boom, gets it to Ben Sims in the flat. 
They used to say Gary Bohannon couldn't go through his progression. Mm, wrong. He's proven everybody wrong every single week. As we talked about last week, he was on fire. He had even he had a career high in passing yards in the first half. A guy who's a real monument to patience and perseverance waited his turn for several years behind Charlie Brewer, who has since transferred. On first and ten, nice cut up the middle by Ebner. And just up ended and there's a flag down Robinson made the tackle for BYU. Man Tristan needed to get those knees up he needed that knee drop like just I had with the Baylor line right. <laughs> oh man he would have been booking on that one if he got him up. Probably still would have came back looks like there might be calling something on the offensive line here but we'll see what the call is. What about the offense? No foul for, on the play for a chop drop. Question contact is legal. All right, no so no penalty. Hey, you mentioned the offensive line. That's one of the more improved units on this Baylor offense, but what about getting those legs up, Robert? Yeah, he's cutting back across the field, and obviously, if he just gets, oh, he just grabs the foot right there. Otherwise, Treston Ebner would have been off to the races down the sideline. We teach this to the running backs all the time in our meetings, and Abram Smith actually had something like that happen to him last week. And then in his next opportunity, he broke about a 40 yarder and got those knees up. OK, great effort, though, by Jacob Robinson to make that tackle for BYU. Nine yard gain, Smith in the backfield, looking at first down and 10 from just outside the 25. The interesting thing is we're seeing both of these offenses kind of get it done in different ways, right? BYU yep. is getting it done through the air, whereas Baylor's running game has really, really been effective. Thornton with one on one coverage on the left side. It goes the other way down the seam, batted away and almost intercepted by Hayden Livingston. Nice break on the ball by the free safety. And it's second down and 10. And you see here, Gary's going to go through his, his play action pass, and the guy that he's got to watch is right there, Hayden Livingston. He never leaves the middle of the field. So if you want to throw this ball, you either got to throw it over the top up here or not at all. But Gary, Man, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. He was really lucky right there. God was looking out for him. Smith in the backfield takes the handoff over the right side. Falls inside the 20, picks up six on the play. Back to Bohannon. And he waited several years to finally become the team starter. Got off to the great start. Only has thrown one interception in 170 pass attempts this year. Had Baylor as an offer and. Uh, had Auburn, had Alabama, had Arkansas, LSU, Georgia coming out of high school. Highly recruited, but it says a lot about his patience that he would wait and then now succeed as a starter. They're going to run it with Smith. Breaks a couple of tackles inside the 10. Strong, determined running by Abram Smith to get 13. Let's go to Quinn. A lot of Bohannon's success tracks back to a small town upbringing in Arkansas. Watching his mom, Juanita, routinely work till 10 p.m. at night. This kid is all in mentality. Two weeks ago, he took responsibility for the loss at Oklahoma State. He said it won't happen again, and he backed it up with a great performance against West Virginia. In a small town of 2,400 people on the jet sweep, Fleeks. Leaping for the end zone, didn't get in. But what an effort by Josh Fleeks. Sets up second and goal. We'll see right here. Got to see if he steps out of bounds before. Yeah, he steps out right before the jump. Otherwise, I think he might. I think he got that ball in. Yeah, he went full Superman on that. It was great effort, man. He did go full Superman, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he sometimes you can't go full Superman all the time. But he did right there from the two. Second and goal. When you talk about Gary Bohannon, just to add a little bit to that, he's just he's a guy that defies odds mm. all the time. Look right here, maybe they might give this one to Dylan Boyle, a fullback. They got a high formation. They give it to the fullback. You called it. Touchdown, Bears. Dallas Doyle old smash mouth football 
Put a fullback in there. Do they still have fullbacks in football, Robert? Uh, they said they might <laughs> not, but he looked really good on that one. It's the simple things, right, that just bring joy to your life. And you see it right here. We see the fans celebrating. We see the team out there excited for him. He's not a guy that's going to get a bunch of carries. Right. But right there, he made it work. And the Bears are rolling right now. Well, just like Coach Drew, the national champs, the basketball team, they have a culture of joy here at Baylor University. There is a culture of joy. These guys are excited to be out here. They want to show BYU what the Big 12 is all about. They're doing it right now. Well, the clasped hands indicating a little divine intervention, some prayer, and all types of people and species do that here in uh, lovely Waco, Texas. <laughs> Beautiful Baptist University. Robert, tell me about tell me about the, the bear thing, man. Yeah, the work? bears, man. They, they're, a lot all, of generations they're all of them, named right? Judge, and that's <laughs> Judge Joy and Judge Lady, and. It's just an incredible experience. They used to be able to bring him out to the field. An onside kick. They try to catch the Cougars napping, and they recover it. Baylor has the football. The Cougars hit the snooze button, and the Bears woke him up. Noah Rauschenberg recovering the football on the onside kick. Oh, and it wasn't even close, right? They didn't just get that barely. Ruling on the field as the ball was legally recovered beyond 10 yards by the kicking team. First down, Baylor. Oh, man, there was no one in a white jersey in sight. Man, like you said, they caught him sleeping. They're trying to wake him up. They said, hey, you thought you were coming to Texas and it was going to be all hot. It's a little chilly, right? It's a little windy. But at the same time, we're going to show you how to, how to play Big 12 football. And right now, that's what they're doing. They're up 17 to 7. Just caught him sleeping on an onside kick. 3.36 to go in the first half, and the Bears, Robert, have an opportunity to get a few more points on the board with a full complement of three timeouts remaining. Great call there by Dave Aranda. It's almost as if he saw that before it happened. He's an oracle type of coach. He is an oracle type of coach. It's Very prescient at times. For our Matrix fans out there, <laughs> he just sees it before the it happens. Clock to three minutes, 35 seconds. Three, three, five. Great starting field position at their own 47-yard line. Smith in the backfield on first down and 10. BYU is not a first-half team the last couple of games. Against Boise State last week. Had some costly turnovers early in that football game that put them in a little bit of a hole. Here's the zone again. Smith bouncing it outside and brought down just shy of the 50 yard line. By Tui OT Mariner. I hope everybody at home is seeing the same thing we're seeing because Abram Smith is a violent, violent runner. Always getting extra yards after contact. It's very, very impressive. Yeah, he's putting the violin in RVO. Their offense, 11 rushes for 90 yards and a touchdown so far this afternoon. Second and eight, and boy, you can't say enough about that guy, Bohannon, who has bounced back from that early interception. And they were going in for a score. Here's the same play, the zone. And this time they're going to throw Smith out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. Hayes in on the tackle as well. Third down coming up after the gain of four. You know, one thing we talked about Bohannon and told me he chose Baylor because he says, I've always looked at football as a family game, and he got a great sense of family when he came to Baylor. It would have been easy for him to get into the transfer portal after his first couple of seasons, but here he is, third and four. Over the middle, complete. Thornton with a catch and the first down. Working against Caleb Hayes, we go back to the studio. All right, what a great job by Coach Stoops at Kentucky this year. My former neighbor down in Miami, Florida, really has Kentucky rolling right now. They run the stretch, nowhere to go this time for Ebner. You mean to tell me they 
They don't just play basketball at Kentucky? <laughs> it's a football school, Robert. It's a football school. Nobody it's told a, you, huh? It's a football school. I don't think they told the fans either. Yeah, our college football Saturday lineup on ABC, ESPN app, capped off by what should be another great one, Oklahoma TCU in our Saturday night game presented by Capital One, 730 Eastern on ABC. Don't sleep on the Horned Frogs. We had a up-close look calling their game last week, and Gary Patterson has a nice crew. Second and 11. Bohannon complete to Ebner. Boy, he hit Hayes with a little bit of sauce. And then brought down by Bywater with 102 to go in the first half. They're in field goal range right now for Hankins on the seven yard gain. As we talked about earlier in the broadcast, fourth down is always in play with both of these teams. So here in their own territory, third and five, shoot, they might go for it if they get to fourth and two. So BYU has to understand that and it changes their philosophy on defense and has made them less aggressive. Thornton lined up to the top of your screen. They're going to run it into the boundary. That's Smith, who's going to be stopped up about a yard shy. Fourth and one coming up with 30 seconds to go. And Aranda going to call a timeout. They'll have two remaining. First time out of the half, called by Baylor. I like we the saw the number off. earlier. They're, they're a real successful team on fourth down this year. Yes, they are. They're actually ranked fifth in the nation. You know, they had a, they've had 11 fourth down conversions coming into today. And I think they already have one today. Right. And uh, I like the timeout. Take some time. Think about it. Hey, we went for it on fourth down before in our own territory. Didn't get it. Does that affect this decision? I don't know. Kick a field goal. Go up and going in half, 20 to 7. Leave a little bit of time for BYU. But if you go for it here, you're really trying to go for the jugular. Hey, we'll look into the future a little bit here too, Robert. This will be a conference game in a couple of years between BYU and Baylor as several teams, including Texas, will move over to the SEC. And in the continuing configuration, refiguration of uh, college football conferences, UCF, BYU, Cincinnati, and Houston become members of the Big 12. Fourth and one. And this time BYU going to call a timeout. It was interesting, Robert, to see and hear that Baylor being the future great conference neighbors, cousins, partners, whatever you want to call it, for BYU, uh, rolling out the red carpet for them as they come to uh, Waco, Texas, in what will be a conference game in a couple of years, uh, but the friendliness stops when they start playing. But what do you make of the new look of the Big 12 and BYU coming in? What kind of fit is that? Well, I know a lot of people thought the Big 12 might be dead mm -hmm. before these new teams came in, and Big 12 found a way to keep itself not just afloat, but also maybe get better. You said, oh, what about Texas? What about Oklahoma? But both of these teams decided that they wanted to go to the SEC, and all these other teams that were left behind didn't know what to do. So you could kind of look at BYU and UCF and all these other teams as kind of a savior for them. But as you said, they roll out the carpet for them, say, hey, come and play. Yeah. Come play here. But when they start on that field and the whistle blows, hey, there is no friendships. Fourth and one. And Bohannon going to keep it himself. Boy, that's going to be close. Not sure that he made it. I'm not sure that he got there. Let's see where they spot this. If that yellow line is accurate, it might not be. Might not be that he got that one, guys. Oh. Oh, he didn't make it. Time on the field for a measurement. BYU's defensive front. Tuiotu Mariner, Mate, and Lopa up front doing a nice job. Oh, they're ready. Look at them. The <laughs> had, BYU faithful, they are. They are ready to get into the Big 12 Conference. She's happy. Look at her. I bet you she knitted that by herself. <laughs> Handmade. And that's going to be short. They didn't make it. The Cougars' defense comes up big there. In the dying seconds of the first half. You see Kalani Sataki there trying to pump up his team. Baylor's gone for it two times on fourth down in their own territory and passed up on taking six points, right? Two field goals if they make them, puts this game at 23 to 7. 
even more out of reach going into halftime. But you can't question Dave Aranda right there and what they're doing. They're in the lead. He's being aggressive. And that's why they're up 17-7. to right. Just want to make sure you're not leaving points on the board. But what a great job he's done this year. Aranda's Bears went 2-7 a season ago, already 5-1. and one. one more win, they're bowl eligible. And with some of the recent machinations in the Big 12, who knows what will happen. Algiers cut down behind the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Good tackle by Doyle, who scored a touchdown a moment ago. What about him? Getting action on two sides of the football, huh? He's versatile, right? They say the more you can do, that's what they say in the NFL, the more you can do, the better it is for you. You can play special teams. Can you play offense? Can you play defense? He's just trying to put it on his resume that, hey, not only can I make tackles, I can run the rock, too. Second 11 coming up. BYU's head coach, Kalani Sataki, sixth year, talked about him and uh, talked about the importance of this game against Baylor. Said they were really excited because, you know, they have a lot of alumni BYU does here in Texas, a lot of connections. Adding the fact that Jeff Grimes, we've talked about, he says he's like a brother to me. And they're focused really on learning from that loss last week against Boise State, their first of the season. They want to see how they bounce back from that. And right now trailing by 10. Really it was an uncharacteristic game for them with the four turnovers that they had. But they really had six because they also had two times where they turned it over on downs. And they're trying to get that back on track today. Algier is going to gain about two on the play. And they're going to run this out. And take that 10 point deficit into the locker room. Baylor going to call a timeout. They've got one remaining. With 14 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Look at our scoring summary so far. It's this nice pass by Jaron Hall to set up the first touchdown of the game by BYU. Threw it downfield, connected with Romney, and then Algier ran it in. And then the tough, unstoppable, non finesse running game of the Baylor Bears clicked in as they just rolled up their sleeves. That was the last touchdown run by Doyle and a little hyped on the sidelines. Third and nine for the Cougars. Algiers can be brought down after a gain of about two. So fourth down coming up. And we're going to have another timeout by Baylor. That's going to be their final one and get the ball back with a little bit of time left. Maybe set up a punt return, get something going here. They do have Ebner and Smith who are pretty good in that part of the game. Look at the menu of games coming up on the family and networks. See how Alabama bounces back after that loss last week against Texas A&M. Yeah, you talk about Alabama bouncing back, right? You talk about Ole Miss and, and how they had that close game last week. And how about the Heisman race right now? It's pretty much wide open. You never know right. what's going to happen the rest of the year. But I don't know, remember if it's ever been this wide open this at this point in the season in any other years. I'm just trying to see if Cincinnati gets into that college football play. <laughs> Fourth and seven. They got to win out. They got to win out if they want a chance. Nobody back. To receive this punt for Baylor. They're coming after it. Oh, he shanked, he shanked it. it out of bounds. Rico, who's averaging over 50 yards per punt this year. Not one of his better efforts. It's going to be marked right around midfield with three seconds to go. So, Baylor, if you're Coach Grimes, what are you doing now with three seconds to go? What are you calling? What are you thinking? If they had Justin Tucker, maybe they might try to kick <laughs> okay. this bad boy. But they don't have Justin he Tucker. He ain't coming through that door. He's not coming through that door. So uh, here, honestly, at this point in the game, you're up 17-7. to Take a knee. Maybe do a handoff. Give a running back another carry. But I wouldn't try any, anything too spectacular or a Hail Mary in this moment because it's not needed. But I'm up here in the broadcast booth. Hey. I'm not the coach. Sometimes greed is good. <laughs> Take a shot. Bohannon going to launch one. Gets it up in the air, and this is going to be picked off. 
Two Cougar players run into each other, and it's knocked loose. Incomplete. Robinson was back there. That's Good why I was. Pressure. That's why I was front. saying. Yeah. That's what I was saying, hey, be smart. Don't do that. But I can tell you there might have been some angels in the outfield right there because that looked like a surefire interception, and it got dropped there by those guys. On homecoming weekend, Baylor with a 10-point lead going into the locker room. Right now, let's go back to the studio and Matt Berry. Matt. This is college football delivered by Papa John's. On the Brazos River, you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN in the shadows of McLean Stadium. It's homecoming weekend with the home crew leading right now 17 to 7 as we get ready to start the third quarter of play. The Cougars will have the football as we take a look at who's making big moves on the field brought to you by SoFi. Robert Griffin the third started it and the running continued. Robert. Oh the running continued for the Baylor Bears. Abram Smith's got 97 rushing yards and a touchdown and boy are they putting up yards or what they got 305 total yards. Everybody's getting in on the action running and throwing. BYU has to find a way to slow them down and generate their own offense in the second half. It'll be first and 10 from the 25. You know what? The fastest guy I've seen on that field today has been you. No, oh, come, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. You know, hey, folks. Mark Jones, I don't care what they say about you, man. You're a great guy. <laughs> folks, I'm not going to lie. My partner went from the Gucci slides, and he still has his Adidas <laughs> running shoes on okay he took it seriously today for homecoming weekend listen these kids they're going out there they hear I'm running the Baylor line to start the game they're not going to take it easy they're going <laughs> to run as fast as they possibly can I had to make sure I was ready to go be why we were the football to start the third quarter Cameron Hall nowhere to go bottled up and completes it to Nakua wow what a grab in traffic let's check out the first half stats brought to you by PlayStation some of the cogent numbers and pertinent numbers so far this afternoon Baylor with over 300 yards total offense in the first half and we also talked about them on fourth downs right in those fourth down conversions I don't know what that thing did right there but they're only been one for three today and it's really hurt them right they've left points on the board six points on the board but I don't want to just gloss over that stop and pop right there by Jaron Hall to Puka Nakoa I mean that was that was incredible Gonna run at this time at Algier. Still fighting. Algier brought down at about the 35 yard line. This BYU squad averaging 27 points a game coming into the afternoon today. And Quint has more from the other sideline. Quint? Yeah, Dave Aranda stressing the importance of this opening possession of the third quarter in terms of a tone setter for the rest of the game. He felt that if BYU was able to get points here, then things would accelerate. If he can stop them, they control tempo. They can run the ball. That They uh, really can control the pace of this game. Here's Hall back to pass. Great move on the defender. And the pass incomplete to the far side of the field. Missed tackle by Petrie on the play. It'll be second down and 10. There's also a significant change on defense for Baylor. We just saw Kalen Barnes boogie. He's back. Speed track guy. Okay. Had a nice break there. But I'm going to show you here on the screen at the bottom. We've also got Al Walcott, number 13, who has replaced Raleigh Tejada. You know, Tejada got got uh, did he get fired I don't know if he got fired but they put him on ice for a little bit yeah, but this is Al Walcott right here you see him there number 13 he is now in the game Tejada was victimized a couple of times earlier by those BYU receivers Nakua on that jet sweep runs steps out of bounds just about a yard shy of the first down picks up nine on the play so it'll be interesting to see if Jaron Hall Robert and the rest of that BYU offense and offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick go to work on Al Walcott. Offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick is staying true to who they are. They're mixing in the run, the jet sweeps in the pass. I but I wouldn't have been surprised if they came out here and said, you know what, we like our matchups outside. We're going to throw the ball every down uh, here in the second half. But he's staying true to who he is. They're going to run it for the first down just across the 40. Oh, they're going to mark it shy of the 45 yard line. Petrie made the tackle. Mm. And it looks like they're a little bit short. Yeah, they are. But it doesn't look like they're good in a punt. 
Wow, so a pivotal point here early in the second half for BYU. They keep the offense on the field. With as close as it is right here, I don't know why they wouldn't do anything but a quarterback sneak. They get up to the line quick. They're five of seven on fourth downs this year. Hall, oh, he hit him with the okie doke move. And Hall is putting some money on tape. Touchdown, Cougars. Wow. Hall, a little prestidigitation. What a fake. Sitaki, the head coach, elated on the sidelines. And why not? I talked with Jaron Hall yesterday about, hey, man, are you looking to get Jiggy out there on the field? <laughs> and he said, hey, man, you know, I'm trying to put them up, put the ones and twos out there. Jaron Hall just faked out the entire stadium. They got man coverage. I would love to show it to you and how they got that done. But wow, look at that run, man. A 56-yard dash across the Central Texas Plains. Look at the coach's reaction after this run. Oh, look at him. Nobody's there. He sees Kalen Barnes coming. He says, hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Touchdown, baby. <laughs> look, his coach is like, oh, he's got the hands. And I'm going to show you how he did it when we get back. This is a great job right here by them. They see that they have man coverage, so they check to the quarterback zone read. And then, boom, hey, Jalen Petrie, you just got catfished, buddy. And there's nobody there. The safety bites. Everybody's playing man coverage. And Jaron Hall shows you just how fast he can be when he is healthy. Wow, he took off a career-long 56-yard run by Jaron Hall and the Cougars right back in this football game. Ebner on the return. He's got a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown this year, but this time brought down at the 23. And you have to love playing for a coach that gets this hyped and excited on the sidelines. This guy is as hyper as a heart attack on the sidelines. Look at Sataki. What do you call that? <laughs> what do you call that celebration? The Sataki? Oh, man, they're going to be doing that. Oh, my oh, God. He did man. look like he was doing the hockey there for a minute, but I can tell you what. That's the kind of coach you want to play for. Former fullback, former player at BYU. 17-14. The coach is uh, breathing kind of hard, too. On the run, this is Smith. And he picks up a first down. Q. Well, Sataki, a Tongan native, grew up in the North Shore of uh, Honolulu, told me at halftime, the D line, A, has got to get more pressure, be more physical, defend the cutback from the wide zone, and then they're going to add an extra guy to the box. And when that happens, their corners are going to have to start winning on the island. They got to defend easy slants and hitches. They got to start winning some on the outside because they're going to have to stack the box. Let's see how Baylor responds to that touchdown. Thornton in motion. They're going to run it again to Smith, and Smith picks up a couple of yards. Going back to Sataki, he's the first Tongan head coach. And a great conversation with him yesterday. He said, it was awesome for my mom and dad to leave a trying situation 46 years ago and now to look at me on the sidelines wearing BYU blue as a head coach. And he said, you know, it's important to see people who look like me in leadership roles. And he's very grateful for the uh, impactful mentors that he's had along his travels and his path, including, importantly, Lavelle Edwards, the former head coach at BYU. Smith pushed out of bounds. Gain of seven. Yes, and when we talked to Coach Sataki, he also talked with us about how he, he leans into these moments. Mm -hmm. Not just the Big 12 game, but also who he represents when he's on that sideline. He understands the gravity of it. He doesn't take it lightly. And that's why he tries to go and represent his people in the right way. And he's doing a phenomenal job of it. Love and learning is their, is their model for the team. And they build a family type of atmosphere, so much so that they got both of the Nakua brothers to transfer in and play together. And these guys, man, they're, they're just a, a, such a family-oriented uh, program, and Sataki is the reason for it. Third and one.
They run the zone again. First down and a little bit more. Still on his feet. Smith on the move. All the way down to about the 23-yard line. Got a good block from Ben Sims, Robert, to spring him loose deep into BYU territory. A pickup of 38. Yes, the, this rushing attack for the Baylor Bears has been phenomenal. You see Ben Sims there get the edge on the defense and seal him off. And not just seal him off, but he finished him off, too. They're trying to say, hey, BYU, look, anything you can do, we can do better. And they are responding in the right way right now. Ebner comes into the ball game after that long run by Smith, who takes a breather. Estrada split to the bottom of your screen, and it's going to be Ebner. Ebner brought down after a short gain on the play. He'll be second down at about eight. Ebner, 5'11", senior out of Abilene, Texas. You know, sometimes we forget. We talk about the skill guys, and we don't give the big guys enough love, but these big boys up front for Baylor are being not only physical and violent, but they're dominating. They are dominating the line of scrimmage. They're winning that battle down in and down out. Second and four. And they will check here. Gets him into the play, and boy, BYU was sitting on that when Ebner brought down for a loss of about three on the play. Thule with a nice surge up front, knifing through there to make the tackle. It'll be third down and long coming up. That looked like a case where they knew it was coming before it came, and they have a little bit of familiarity with the, with the system there with Jeff Grimes, right? Yeah, once again, we have a BYU uh, player shaking up down in the field. We'll get more on that from Jacob Palu, who's down on the field when we come back. College football back in Waco, Texas, Baylor leading BYU. We are joined by two of the most recognizable figures in Central Texas. Chip and Joanna from Fixer Upper, uh, both Baylor alums, and, 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 and you've, you've come to homecoming. What stands out about this festivity here today? Oh my God. Nothing like the spirit, the tradition of Baylor homecoming. You can feel it in the air, the spirit and the energy. It's the best thing. Let's we love go. it. Let's go! <laughs> we had Robert uh, run, run out with the students earlier. As you see the ball down on the five-yard line, great run by Bohannon. Gary Bohannon. What's your biggest memory of, of when RG3 uh, lit this place up? Well, hey, I don't even know who you're talking about because, listen, uh, uh, you must be an old-timer because we don't call him RG3 around these parts. We call him Mr. Heisman, Sir Heisman, oh. just Heisman. You know, so, I mean, back in the day, Robert was uh, the man. <laughs> I mean, you know, when he stepped foot on campus, everything changed. I mean, this stadium, I mean, we, we call this the house that RG3 built uh, for a reason. So we're so proud of him, and, man, uh, we, we, we miss him every day he's not here. Down to the two. Thank you. Yes, Appreciate sir. your time. Great work here in this area. All right. Mark. All right, Q. Smith puts it on the two-yard line for Baylor. Ebner and Smith have done a great job moving a football on the ground for the Bears. They've got a total of 381 total yards of offense. They came into the game today averaging 37 points per game. Second and goal coming up. Sit here and see if the Bears can punch it in again. They got, they got our guy Doyle in there at fullback again. Let's see what they do this time. BYU trying to sub some guys into the game late, and they'll have to call a timeout, Mr. Heisman. Ah, here we go. You didn't think I was going to let them go, let you slide like no, that, right? Man, I knew as soon as he said it, I'm like, I'm going to hear about this for three weeks from my guy Mark <laughs> Jones. But Chip and Joanna, they've been great. Not, not just to me and my family, but just to the whole community in Waco. And I can't say enough good things about them. And. Uh, they've been uh, they've just been phenomenal. So I'm I'm you know, it's an honor to hear them say that and uh, really just uh, takes you back and you realize just the impact that not only the people who came before me made and uh, and how the impact that they have made in the city of Waco, but you always want to leave a place better than when you found sure. it. And I think that's what uh, we're all doing. Q, they're known for their fixer upper fame. This Baylor Bears team, the fixer upper unit, this offensive line. Now you talk about a, a unit that's dramatically improved with Jeff, Jeff Grimes as their offensive coordinator and Eric Mateos. This group was not good last year at all. And now 
they're on the verge of scoring again and dominating this game. See what they do on second and goal. They brought in Doyle at fullback. They line up out of the eye. Play fake, Bohannon. Touchdown, Boyle. A receiving touchdown now. What doesn't he do? The leading tackler on defense has a rushing touchdown and now a receiving touchdown today. You knew that when Dylan Doyle came in the game for another time at fullback, BYU was going to have their antennas up and say, oh, let's be careful. They might hand it off to him. So what does Baylor do? Oh, man, they sneak him out into the flat and let that man catch the rock. I know all his defensive buddies are right now going to Coach Aranda saying, hey, can I play? Can I play <laughs> offense next week? Can I play offense next week? Just awesome. Boy, uh, Jeff Grimes doing a great job pressing all the right buttons offensively, using the entire playbook for Baylor today. The secret weapon, Dylan Doyle. Look at him fake out the, the defensive end, and then he catches it, looks it in, and then he's like, oh, my God. I got two touchdowns today, baby! <laughs> wow, that's fun. Boy, what a response by Baylor offensively to that BYU touchdown prior to theirs. A nine-play, 78-yard drive using 423 on the clock to make it 24-14. And this is a mid-season non-conference game, but not non-conference for long. Dylan Doyle right there with a second, that's right, second touchdown of the game a moment ago. Folks, he's the team's starting linebacker, too, by the way. What an afternoon for him. We didn't see that one coming, Robert. Oh, no. We, well, know, maybe we, you did. I'll hey speak man, for myself. I listen, didn't. in football, when you see things that are just a little odd, you got to right. point him out. So we pointed him out both times, but Dylan Doyle, is, he's balling, man. And he's not just doing it on the offensive side. He's really being an impact player on the defense as well. Jaron Hall in at quarterback. As healthy as he's been since the start of the season. Pulls it out on the RPO, taking a shot down deep, got a man, and it's caught at the 26-yard line by Nakua, getting in on Kalen Barnes that time. Those BYU receivers continue to make big plays. That one for 48. We talked about it, the 50-50 ball. What do they do? Puka Nakua's going off, so they put Kalen Barnes on him. And he's in great position, even has a hand in there. But Puka Nakua says, guess what, man? It don't matter. I'm going to keep slapping my helmet and letting them know that it's a mismatch. Throw me the rock. They get back a big chunk down to the 27. Option into the boundary. Algier made a nice cut, put his foot in the ground, and picked up about four and a half. Well, our college football Saturday lineup on ABC and ESPN app capped off by what should be another good one. Number four, Oklahoma against TCU in our Saturday night game presented by Capital One, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. What does Oklahoma have left in the tank after that thrilling, compelling comeback last week against Texas? And who's going to be the starting quarterback and for how long? It could be a trap game there, right? <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma, TCU coming off of that excitement from the Texas game. And TCU's got a stable of backs, too. On second and seven, Hull. Little waggle action. Mm. Wow, incomplete. And uh, Nakua, pardon me, Dolan Holker was the receiver. Came down hard. Man. On third and seven coming up now. Man, let's take a listen in to what that sounded like. Oh my goodness! Hard fall on the sidelines. I think he broke that marker. It's a big boy, huh? 6'5, 225, Dallin Holker. That's like. Uh, he broke it in half, Robert. Yeah, I think he did break it in half. I think they yeah. got a spare down there. Third and seven coming up for the Cougars. Backside heat, fumble, got knocked loose. It's on the ground. Loose ball. A big hit by T.J. Franklin. And the Bears have the football. And McLean is lit. Just as BYU is responding once again on offense, they get some pressure to the quarterback, Jaron Hall. And Cause the fumble as he's trying to throw the ball. You see it here. He's looking to the left. What a move right there by TJ Franklin. 
look at it even closer right here on number 74. Ooh. He said, man, at least at least the tackle's got to say, look out. <laughs> look out, Jaron. He's coming. From the 33. Smith in the backfield. Sims in motion now six. Run the zone to Smith. And a nice crease and makes it out to the 40 yard line. Picks up about seven on the play. Will Gar in on the tackle. Gain of six for Baylor. 6.15 to go here in the third quarter. Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Robert Griffin the third and Quint Kessenick here on homecoming afternoon in Waco, Texas at Baylor University. Franklin made the big play a moment ago. Had to count in some uh, Franklins and Benjamins after that kind of play. Without a doubt. Second and five. Mohanan single coverage. Thornton caught it. Complete. Tyquan Thornton lets him know what time it is. He beat D'Angelo Mandel on the play. Tyquan Thornton might have to take a page out of Puka Nakua's book. Right? He sits here. As you see, Gary Bohannon looking off the safety because he knows he's got one-on-one -on -one bump and run to his guy, and he just delivers a dime. I mean, he airdropped that one to him <laughs> and hit him in stride along the sideline. Tyquan's letting him know, hey, this Mandel, hey, he's a man down. <laughs> 45 yards on the game, down to the 16. They run it again. Big crease for Smith. And Smith picks up about eight, almost nine on the play. Thornton talked about him a little bit earlier. Has great speed. Back in high school, ran a 10.5, 100 meters. Now, I know down in Dade County, that'll at least get you to the semifinals. To the semifinals? Not the finals. We got a lot of speed down there in Miami. There is a lot of speed down in Miami, <laughs> but I would argue that Texas probably has the fastest guys in the nation. I don't want, I don't want to fight with you on homecoming. But oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Guy that decommitted from Florida ended up at Baylor. Second and one. Keep it on the ground. Smith, touchdown! The Bears strike again. Wow. We talked about this offensive line. And you can just see, when we show you the replay, how they push the line of scrimmage backwards. That's called domination. So let me show you right here. They're pushing this line, and they're pushing the line of scrimmage back so that Abram Smith doesn't even get touched until about four to five yards down the field. Abram Smith is a phenomenal wide zone, one cut running back. But this offensive line, wow, you got to give Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos, the offensive line coach, a raise midway through the season because this has been an unbelievable turnaround from last year. And they lost three starters, brought in two transfers. It's, uh, it's really something to see with what they're doing today against BYU. Don't usually get a chance to say their names, but let's say them. Galvin, 76, Newman Johnson, 55, Golf, 66, Miller, 63, and Byers, 58. The big fellas doing all the heavy lifting in a very uh, unglamorous position up front on the offensive line. I love it, Mark. Give those guys their due because today they showed up. It's been a war of attrition. It's been a very physical game, which it always is when you play against BYU, and they have stepped up to the table and delivered. And it all started with that big hit and fumble caused by T.J. Franklin. The Bears moving down the field. There's a look at Franklin, who was the catalyst that started that scoring drive with his big play. 31-14, the Bears with the lead. Well, our Week 6 Monday NFL football matchup as AFC leading Buffalo in Tennessee to take on the Titans. This big matchup starts at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. The Portes and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. A couple MVP candidates there, right? Josh right. Allen, Arm Arrogance doing his thing out there, and Derrick Henry. I don't think you want to get stepped on by that no, guy, do you? No, 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 no. Get out the way. Get out the way. <laughs> get out the way. And Josh Allen have another great year for the Buffalo Bills. How big has Stephon Diggs been for him over the past mm. couple of years? One of the best receivers in the league. Rise right. down. About four and a half minutes to go in the third. 
Baylor with a couple of touchdowns here in the third quarter. It'll be BYU football. Impressive scoring drive a moment ago. And this was the start of it, the big hit by Franklin. And then, of course, Gary Mahanan comes back and delivers a dime down the sideline to Tyquan Thornton. And then as we re we talked about those big offensive linemen just moving the line of scrimmage and Abram Smith finishing it off. You know, Baylor's really been rolling all day today. It's going to be up to BYU and how they respond now with four minutes left in the third quarter to see if they can get back into this game. Baylor's run almost twice as many plays as BYU underneath. Wide open to the tight end, Isaac Rex. And Rex has a first down around the 45-yard line. As we look at the respective numbers of the quarterbacks today, Hall and Bohannon. Hall with that fumble a moment ago. There's a look at them. Hall has been efficient. He just hasn't been on the football field a lot. Exactly. They haven't been able to sustain drive. So you look at his numbers, and he has been consistent. And he's played well today. He even had the 56-yard touchdown run. And Gary has the interception, but he just made up for that with a touchdown pass to Doyle. My grades for those guys are, are pretty high right now. Paul finds his receiver again. That's Pau for another first down. We spoke with Jaron Hall yesterday. And uh, it was funny. I asked him, uh, Who's coming to the game? Any of your family? He said, yeah, mom and dad finally found some flights. A little, uh, little on the well, pricey side. A little on the pricey <laughs> side, you know. But hey, when you buy late, it happens that way sometimes. It does. It happens that way for us every single week. <laughs> hey, just don't get caught in that middle seat. All looking for a receiver. Guy that has an old soul downfield. <laughs> That's out of bounds, incomplete. There's a flag down back at about the 45-yard line. It's going to be a hold on Algier. Trying to keep Bernard off his quarterback. Holding. Offense number 25, 10-yard penalty. It's first down. And you know, Jaron Hall said he likes that old school, yeah. old school music, right? And he said, oh, I like the old school. And then he said, boys to men and Michael Jackson. And I could just see, Mark, <laughs> I could see his whole complacency. Oh, my goodness. Because that is old school hey, now, old school guys. Old school for me is going back a little further than That's that. That's what I figured. But, he, you know, he's a young guy. I'm a young. I'm 31. I'm not yeah, that old yet. Yeah. But old, old school for me is... Uh, Little Al Green, you know, look, look, very white. Look, James Brown. <laughs> Get it on a good foot. Say it 324. <laughs> Hall, they set up a screen. It's complete to Hill. And nowhere to go for him. Brought down right around midfield by Randolph. What has Baylor defense done? A nice job today. Tailing a, containing a BYU offense that's averaging about 27 points per game coming in. You know, and Jaron Hall talking about that old school music, right? Little James Brown, the, the big payback. They're trying to right. get back in this game, and he's trying to take it out, all his frustrations on this Baylor defense right now. Boise State last week was really determined not to let him run. But he did amass over 300 yards passing. This one completing a great tackle on Algier by Petrie. No gain on the play. BYU still fighting an uphill battle, third and long coming up. Under two and a half to go here in the third quarter. Nose of the ball resting at midfield. Jalen Peacher right there did exactly what you're supposed to do in the open field. Shoot your shot, right? They always say that on Instagram too. Hey guys, make sure you shoot your shot, but <laughs> you got to make sure it goes in. Petrie shot a shot right there, got the tackle. This Baylor defense is actually playing really well today as well. Hall looking to throw it under duress. And he wisely throws it out of bounds. Matt Berry not sliding into any DMs, right, Matt? Thanks a lot, Matt. <laughs> Appreciate you, Matt. <laughs> end over end punt. And it's going to carry him into the end zone and come out first down and 10. 50 yard effort. 
It'll be Baylor football. Well, this season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Some of the wonderful works that they are behind and helping out. 146 to go in the third quarter. First down and 10 for the Bears from the 20 yard line. Gary Bohannon doing a masterful job showing great dominion over this offense this afternoon. First down and 10. 450 total yards and adding a little bit more to the total there is Abram Smith brought down by Chaz Ayu. This is the most important drive in the game for both teams, right? If you're Baylor, you're up by 17, you want to put the game away, you can do it right here. But for BYU, normally we talk about offenses having to respond after the other offense scores. But this defense has to step up and respond and give their offense an opportunity to get back into this football game. They're going to run it again. This is Smith again. No, they pull it out. And that was intended for Thornton. So it's a third and long. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer right now that Malik Moore right there, number 12, the safety, he altered that throw. They, uh, they saw that Tyquan Thornton is a deep threat and that their, their corner, Mandel, D'Angelo Mandel, couldn't stick with them. But you see this throw here, and who pops up into the picture? Boom, right there, number 12. And I think Gary was trying to back shoulder Tyquan Thornton there and just threw it a little bit too high. That Snead in motion. And up in a trips right formation. O'Hannon on the move, eludes pressure, and Thornton is brought down at the 25. It's going to set up a fourth and five. Ayu with another nice play defensively for the Cougars, a gain of just two, and with a under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Baylor will bring in their punt team. Oh, yeah, they're not going for it on fourth down right here. No. Not up 17 in their own territory. No matter what the analytics say, the analytics are probably on their side of punting as well. Dave Aranda telling us that his team has a lot of guys who've been there for five and even six years, a lot of super seniors. We've seen plenty of different people. And he's built a lot of great personal relationships leading to their success this year. Nyberg corrals the punt and is brought down immediately on the play after that 50 yard punt. First and 10 from there for Jaron Hall. You know, Jones, you mentioned COVID and, and these super seniors and, and how these guys have been here for four, five, six years. And we kind of looked at last year and said COVID kind of hurt teams, especially right. coaches who are just coming in and trying to develop their programs. But how has it helped teams build their programs now that they get these guys to come back for an extra year? I think that's a point that people are missing maybe right. a little bit. I love it that the NCAA is. Uh, Showing a lot of uh, empathy and understanding in a COVID year to give these athletes another year to play if they want it. Hall slips and falls at the 22 yard line. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. That'll be the last play. The Bears leading by 17. And there are. The Baylor Bears and these Bears leaving claw marks all over the place. Back for the final 15 right after this. Well, Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live My Student Section of the Year Contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. A vociferous student section on hand here today at McLean Stadium their team leading as we enter the fourth quarter Rex with the catch starting tight end with a little gain on the play tell you this Sikkim student section one of the best I've seen given their proximity to the opponent I mean they are hovering right behind this BYU bench and they've made it difficult to all game I got to give Baylor credit their band is loud as well as I'm trying to walk through the drum Wow! 
Quint won't be able to hear us for the next couple of weeks. Algier picks up the first down. T.J. Franklin, who caused that fumble, which led to the touchdown a moment ago, made the tackle on the play. A gain of seven for Algier. If you guys remember, I talked to you about Al Walcott, who came in number 13 for number three, uh, Raleigh Tejada. And uh, Tejada's back in the game. There he is. He just took a break. He didn't okay. get fired. He's back out there, and he's impressed man coverage. Letting Puka Nakua say, it was that Puka? Yeah, what? no, it wasn't. Yeah, that's Romney right there. Letting him know that he's going to be there all day. Pass over the middle, complete. Caught Romney with the first down. He got rocked at the 45. 19-yard gain on the play. JT Woods making a hit, a.k.a. Heartbreak Kid. And as we just talked about, Raleigh Tejada, they go right at him with Mr. Romney. And you know what JT Wood said? I've had enough of this. I'm the heartbreak kid, and you're picking on my teammate. I'm going to let you know that you're not going to run across this middle for free. Big day across the country in college football, especially in the Big Ten. Downfield, that's caught. Tejada victimized by Nakua as we check in with the studio. Surprise there. 29 yard gain on that catch by Nakua. They're going to take one more look at this. Here's one more Nakua. Oh, I guess what it comes down to, I'm going to say it's out. I'm going to say it's out, and here's why. When you put your toes down, if you can keep your heel up, they will say that's a catch. But if your toe and your heel touch at the same time like that, it might not be. Wow. So while you were gone, they ruled that it was an incomplete pass, and here's why. Anytime you get your toe in and you can tap it, it's a catch. But as soon as the heel comes down out of bounds, that is a continuation of the catch. And because of that, it is an incomplete pass. They call it toe drag swag for a reason. It's not mm. called toe heel swag. There you go. Right, so the toe's in. Once the heel comes down, incomplete. Oh, wow. Incomplete Great explanation. Pass. Yeah, and that's incomplete. No doubt about that one. Gunnar Romney dropped it. Romney, of course, his brother Baylor Romney, the backup quarterback who got a lot of playing time while Jaron Hall was injured for a couple of games. Sets up a third down and ten for the Cougars. You know, the, his, di his distant relative is Mitt Romney. Hey. I don't think he ever played for BYU, but they got two Romneys now. I guess two Romneys better than one. Yeah. <laughs> Previous play is under review for the potential for targeting. Wow. Oh, let's take a look at that. They called in from upstairs. A seemingly harmless play a moment ago now being reviewed. As Romney went to make the catch here. Yeah, so we got this. He drops the pass, the push. Oh, come on. Come on. They're going to try to get that on. He was being pushed from behind. On Jalen Petrie, but he's getting pushed right into the tackle by Puka Nakua. So. I'm not sure how you call that. I mean, that. what do you do as a defender there in that situation? I mean. There's almost nothing he can do. It's almost like he's. That's an involuntary movement by him, right? Exactly. If he's being pushed. He's being pushed right into the guy. At oh, some man. point, I know we're trying to protect the players, and that's always the priority. Yeah. But you also can't do it to the detriment of the players, right? So you see right here. Uh, it's actually Pau who pushed him into him, not Puka Nakua. But right. Pau's sitting there saying, hey, man, come on. He hit him in the helmet. Neil, you yeah. pushed him though. This you is going to be this is going to be a very interesting interpretation and adjudication of the rule, as we know it, when someone's being pushed from behind. After reviewing the play, there is no foul for targeting. There it is. Look at that. They got it right. Yep. 
They don't always get it right on the taunting calls in the <laughs> right. NFL. Yeah. But they got that right. Yeah. And you got to remember what the targeting rule is. You know, it has to be every single one of the parameters. And I didn't see him launch. I don't think he did it on purpose. And he got pushed into the guy. So Jalen Petrie gets, uh, doesn't even get away with one. That shouldn't have even been called. Right. No launch or upward thrust there. No forcible hit with the crown of the helmet. Here we go on third and ten for the Cougars. Four receivers out on this formation. On the quick slant, Pau makes the catch, but he's short of the first down by a bunch. JT Woods there with another tackle. Woods had a team high three interceptions a season ago. Has two of them this year. And he's a former 110 meter high hurdler. Yes, he is. And uh, got the nickname Heartbreak Kid because he owned the quarterbacks during spring and fall practice breaking up their passes making interceptions breaking their hearts in his words fourth and two Hall wow, wow into a tight window what a what grab a by Gunnar Romney I wanted to say Jaron Hall did a nice job simple solid job of taking what the defense gave him on third down to put them in a manageable fourth down so right here, right, they tried to run a nice little boot, a nice little sprint out action, and then you can see as he's looking, look at this window. Jeez. That's a very, very small, you wouldn't put that window on your house, <laughs> right? What a throw. Pulls it out on the RPO, downfield in the end zone. Broken up, tried to hit Romney again, but Walcott says not this time. You're not going to knock on my door and kick it in again. Second down and 10. And as we look at that delivery from Jaron Hall, coach is telling us earlier that he has quote unquote flawless mechanics refined through the years by his dad, who was a former football player at BYU, Dusty Smith, and John Beck, his quarterback coaches along the years. What do you make of the way he delivers it? Well, these quarterbacks nowadays are working with these QB coaches at such a young age, but Jaron Hall said the reason he is the way that he is today is because of his father, and I think we can speak to more of that after this play. On second and ten, all day to throw it. Well, not quite all day, maybe one play. Doyle doing it on both ends, on both sides of the football. Dylan Doyle. Now I want you to see Dylan Doyle's right here. He gets stonewalled by the running back, but effort gets rewarded. He gets through, and he says, listen, man, I got two touchdowns. Why not get a sack? <laughs> That's the fifth Baylor sack today. You can't spell defense without Dylan or Doyle and the Ds. That right there is an old-school throwback two-way player, baby. We don't see him that much nowadays. Third and 22. All on the rollout. Takes the easy one to Algier. It looked like he stepped out of bounds at about the 33. They'll give him a yard inside the 32 and fourth down coming up. 11 minutes to go. Boy, what an afternoon for Dylan Doyle on both sides of the football. Boom. Look at that. Gets a piece of the sack there with Jalen Petrie. Comes through, gets a sack here on Jaron Hall. Oh no, look at him at fullback. Give him the ball, baby. And he can catch that bad boy too. He is having one heck of a day for homecoming as BYU attempts the field goal here. This will be from 48 yards out. Oldroyd gets it up in the air. And he knocks this one through. An impressive kick from 48 yards out after missing earlier from 50. It's 31 17 with. Plenty of football to play when we come back to McLean Stadium. ESPN College Football is delivered by the Shakaroni from Papa John's. Pizza with a purpose. Order today. And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Coach Aranda, some of the players, a lot of the fans on hand last night at the pep rally and then today I caught the homecoming parade on TV Robert you were there with your wife Grete and the kids 
How much fun was that, partner? It was a blast. <laughs> My daughter, uh, Gloria, a four-year-old, she was throwing candy out to the kids. It was fun, man. It's just cool to see my family's reaction to all of the fandom and everything and all the traditions. It was, um, it was a blast. Home team leading. Couldn't have written it up any better right now. Up by 14. They're going to take it out of the end zone. Edner has a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Not this time. Brought down prior to the 20-yard line at about the 17. As we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings. College football rankings, pardon me. Brought to you by PlayStation. I'm anticipating the playoff rankings coming up pretty soon. What do you like when you look at that? Well, I'm not going to lie. I actually like the parity that we're seeing at the top, right? Okay. With the, the first couple teams, the teams have had a couple losses. We're really going to see who the best teams in the country are as the season continues to unfold. And right now, mm, who knows? Okay. Who is that team? We thought it might have been Georgia. Do you think Alabama falling to five was far enough? No. Okay. I think everyone. Okay. Just asking. Ebner on the toss into the boundary. But to, to, picks up about eight. To expand upon that, I think Alabama lost at number one to an unranked Texas A&M. Right. I think if it was any other team not named Alabama, they probably would have fell a lot further. Does that mean that Alabama is not one of the top ten teams or top five teams in the nation? I don't know. Right. No one knows. We're all guessing at this moment. We will see. But Georgia's a pretty good team, and they're up 30-7 to right now against Kentucky. And I don't think anybody would, would have a, a gripe about them being the number one team in the country right now. That defense is phenomenal. Jordan Davis is playing out of his right. mind. But uh, Alabama probably didn't far, fall enough, far enough, but at the same time, we'll see how it all plays out throughout the year. Iowa in trouble right now against Purdue at home. Second and four, they give it to Estrada on the jet sweep, and he picks up the first down. And if... Iowa loses to Purdue. What does Cincinnati get rewarded with? They should. In the polls. <laughs> they should get rewarded with a number two in okay. the polls. But as we know, sometimes we feel like there's a little bias towards uh, these non-Power 5 teams, right. the group of five teams. And if Cincinnati keeps winning, it doesn't matter what the rest of their schedule is the rest of the year. If they're winning, they should continue to move up. Yeah, they're continuing to play good football, albeit uh, Light of the fact they lost Coach Freeman, the defensive coordinator to Notre Dame, one of the rising stars in the business. On the run, this is Smith breaking a tackle, picks up about three on the play. Baylor can afford to be a little bit methodical and deliberate here with the score and clock in their favor. Second down and six, and Robert, it helps that they've run the ball very well today, right? They have, and right there you saw number 95, Caden Hawes, who's actually a former offensive lineman now excelling on the defensive side of the ball, almost had a tackle in the backfield, which is what you need against the wide zone. You could say really against any running, especially the wide zone. Penetration and getting tackles for loss can kind of shut that down. I just missed it there. Run a little counter here across the formation, Ebner. We'll set up about a third down and three to go for the Bears. Both teams with, well, BYU with just two timeouts remaining. Baylor with a full complement of three. But Smith and Ebner have run the ball for over 240 yards today together. Third and three coming up for Gary Bohannon, who is a much improved quarterback from a season ago. Stellar stats. And the results to prove it. On the jet sweep, Ebner turns it north-south. Got the first down and then some. Still on his feet and pushed out of bounds finally around the 20-yard line. Malik Moore pushed him out. But a big run and a first down for the Bears. As I watched the play develop, I thought, man, Gary should have pulled that one. But right here, he gives it to Treston Ebner. And you talked about it. They said they want him to be more downhill, but this is what he does best. Getting out on the edge, using his speed. And I talked to him yesterday. He said, man, I got to run it in from like 30, 40, 50 yards out because they're not going to give it to me when we get in the red zone. Right. So I know he's mad right now about not getting that one in. But it looks like they're marking him a little further back and saying he stepped out of bounds. So not as quite, a, uh, quite as big of a run but still an exciting play, and they get the first down. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, really accepted the challenge to be a little bit more physical in the run game. He's reset the clock to 7.15. 7.15 on the game clock. Ebner out of Henderson, Texas, 5'11", 50-year senior. 
take one more look at where he exactly stepped out of bounds. Oh, look at that. It's just he's still feet, in and feet then, still in right there. He steps out of bounds. Yeah, you know, so it's a 37 yard run. It's called genetics. Sometimes when we run, you know, <laughs> some of my feet be going different directions. Okay. It is what it is, man. They keep it on the ground with Smith and Smith gets about two, almost three on the play under seven minutes to go. BYU comes in here as the ranked team, number 19 in the polls. And I would have thought that after that win last week against Baylor, that Baylor might have snuck into the top 25, although I think they were amongst other teams receiving votes. Based upon the votes, they were ranked 28th, but no one ranks the guys after 25, right? And here's Estrada in motion, now sets to the top of your screen. They keep it on the ground. Smith again. He's going to be stopped up after a gain of about one. It'll be third down, about seven to go. As BYU brings in some new personnel. Let's take a look at today's game track delivered by Papa John's. Smith, a career high 183 on the ground, a couple of touchdowns. Nakua, 152. Yeah, we talked about Puka Nakua and these receivers from BYU and the, and the feeling that they had that they had great matchups, but they just haven't had enough opportunities because they haven't been able to sustain drive. On third and six, they're going to keep it on the ground with Ebner trying to get around the edge, does, gets the first down and then some inside the five. First and goal, Baylor. I tell you what, Tristan Ebner's got a nose for the end zone. He's trying, he's trying. Boom, he says, you know what? Coach said, I'm going to get outside. He hits a little stutter step. Boom, misses another tackle and still trying to find that end zone. Coach, leave him in. <laughs> leave him in. Let him go out there and get that touchdown. But Quint? Tell you, Ebner was the key in that win over Iowa State with the kickoff return, the long punt return. Just brilliant in the open field. Such a space player. He's got the spin move. He's got the stiff arm. I can run through tackles on the edge a game changer and he's got fresh legs right now first and goal they bring in Smith and Smith stopped up at about the three yard line Abram Smith has one hundred and eighty five yards rushing and I think that might have been his twenty fourth or twenty fifth carry and as you and I know Gary Patterson would not be very happy right now with the amount of carries that Abram Smith has because you can't put that much on the back. But when you're in one of these physical games sometimes you got to lean on your best players. We got a time under the field Smith doing a great job on the ground for the Bears. They have the lead when we come back. This college football delivered by Papa John's from McLean Stadium folks you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN. Baylor football inside the five yard line. They brought in Dylan Doyle at fullback along with Smith. Doyle has a couple of touchdowns already. One running, one passing. Bohannon throws it. It's caught, but short of the end zone. Caught by Sims, the tight end. Bywater there immediately making the stop on the play. And it's third down and goal. What'd you make of that play, Robert? I like the play call, right? You bring in Doyle again, you do a right. little misdirection, a little play action pass, boot. Injury timeout, please set the clock to 440. 440. And, ben, and Ben Sims actually thought he had one yeah. there, but man, they got him right before he could get in there. Got hit right away. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must have for Big 12 fans. The basketball season is less than a month away, and Big 12 Media Days gets you ready with a season preview. Interviews with every head coach, top players, each team. The women's coverage begins Tuesday at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Then men are Wednesday morning, 9.30 a.m., 8.30 Central. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12. Now, the defending champs in the Big 12 in basketball live right here. Take a bow, Coach Tang of Baylor and uh, his staff. Baylor at 3-1. and one. Coach Drew as well. And... This is the football side of the ledger. <laughs> it sure Three is. and zero at the top, Robert Baylor. Three and one. It's going to be an interesting finish to Big 12 play for sure. Third and goal. Doyle in at fullback still. The starting linebacker Sims comes across the formation, and we have a whistle down on the field.
clock should not have been stopped. Please set the game clock to 440, play clock to 40. Both will start on my signal. All right, so they're going to put a few seconds back on the clock. Working Please against the, the Cougars right now. Seconds. Down by a couple of touchdowns. And Baylor threatening from just inside the one. The ref told them, boys, hey, hey, I'm in charge here, okay? I'm the captain <laughs> now. You do it what I tell you to do. Yeah. This is not the AAU where you got running clock. Third and goal. Doyle and Smith in the backfield out of the eye. Play clock at 15. Sims in motion. It's Smith. I'm not sure that he got in. Good resistance. The Cougar defense impenetrable that time. Oh, wow. Sets up a third and goal. Let's uh, take a look along the goal line to see if he got in or not. BYU's been stout down here. And like you said, they've been but don't break. But right here, the running back, Abram Smith, tries to get in. And ah, you just can't tell. Whatever they called it on the field. And you see there's a fumble there at the end. Whatever they called it on the field is probably what it's going to be. It's going to be fourth and goal yeah. here. Got a time out on the field. Fourth and goal coming up. But yeah, we're going to get a look at these two teams in a couple of years as members of the same conference. There's a look at the ball. Smith. Not really definitive from that angle as yeah, to whether I mean, he got in or not. His foot broke the plane, but honestly, if you can't see the ball break the plane, you can't make the call. So. Good job by BYU being stout up front, hitting them at the point of attack, and driving their feet. Yeah. That's classic, classic defense right there. And I never played defense. <laughs> <laughs> did you kick the field goal here? I have not kicked the field goal, but I did get a punt okay. in college. Do these guys kick the field goal? Do they kick the field goal here? Uh, they're going to go for it. It wow. looks like they're going to go for it. The analytics will tell you to kick the field goal to try to put the game completely out of reach with three minutes left in the game. But yeah, then it becomes three scores. Yeah, but right now. Coach Aranda saying, look, I'm leaning on my guys. Leaning on this big offensive line that's been dominating all game. See what they can do. Fourth and goal. Doyle and Smith out of the eye. Sims in motion. Smith got in this time, no doubt about it. Touchdown, Baylor. That's his career high third rushing touchdown this afternoon. And that right there is why you trust your guys. And you trust your gut, right? Yeah. We talked about Dave Aranda being like an oracle type of guy. He can see it before it happens. He wills it into existence. And he trusted his guys. And it does finally seem like Baylor has found that Baylor line that they've been looking for. These big boys are playing at an extremely high level. It's really come together again today. In the wake of an impressive win last week against West Virginia, their only hiccup so far this year, a loss in Stillwater a couple of weeks ago. The extra point is good. It's 38 to 17. Smith, three touchdowns. Yeah, it'll make you want to jump. Bears in control when we come back. Our college football Saturday lineup on ABC and the ESPN app capped off by what should be another good one. Oklahoma, number four against TCU in our Saturday night game presented by Capital One, 730 Eastern on ABC. And speaking of the ESPN app, talked about being able to get ESPN Plus. Big 12 media days coming up. And uh, speaking of Big 12, uh, BYU, of course, independent. Coach Pope at BYU, the basketball coach, has a nice crew getting ready for the season. And... Let's go back to the studio.
Okay, Robert Griffin the third. I'm beating the drum for Cincinnati right now because number two goes down. Number two goes down. They should move up. <laughs> right. They should move up. Yeah, There's some funny math sometimes. First and ten for the Cougars. Hall flushed out and steps out of bounds at about the 32. Started to talk about BYU and uh, what a great fit it is for them going into the Big 12. Basketball-wise, Coach Pope, I said, has a great squad put together for the upcoming season. As we look at Coach Sataki and, uh, you know, Coach Pope has a wonderful and a talented transfer from San Jose State joining the squad this year. Seneca Knight. Folks, look out for him. He's a baller. He can hoop. He'll be one of the top players in the conference this year. Because I keep it a buck with you, Robert. Hey, I'm listen, just giving if, you a heads up. If anyone is wondering at home, <laughs> if you get Mark Jones talking about <laughs> basketball, we'll be here all night. <laughs> Ooh, with the catch. But I also want to bring up just how good of a fit this BYU football team is for the Big 12. Don't get it twisted. Don't let the score confuse you. This is a good football team. Third down and one. And what do you make of their performance today in the, in the bigger context? Hold on a sec. We're, we're going to go back on basketball a little bit. We're, we're going to stick on that because NBA is the home right here. Oh, okay, okay. Exclusive home of the NBA is ABC. Next Wednesday, our doubleheader. Knicks Celtics followed by Suns Nuggets on ESPN. The season begins. Romney with a grab all the way down to the 13-yard line. He victimized Kalen Barnes. For the big catch. Threw it up like an alley-oop almost and came down with it. Hey, Gunnar Romney has been their leading receiver all year, and you see him right here. Just another 50-50 ball. Mm -hmm. This is why Kalen Barnes plays DB and Gunnar Romney plays wide receiver. Here's Hall again. Taking off this time and slides down at about the seven-yard line. And I say that about Romney and Kalen Barnes, not because Kalen Barnes is in a great corner. He is. But Gunnar Romney tracks the ball better, and that's why he plays the position. Kalen Barnes might say, hey, he kind of threw me down a little bit. But wow. Gunnar Romney has great concentration, and he's showing you that these BYU Cougars are never going to quit. And that's why I'm saying don't let the score confuse you. This team is good. They just weren't able to get the running game started, and that's where their offense always starts. I remember that they are missing those two starting offensive linemen. And that was a red flag Ball coming into the game. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. The second down. 206 to go, as we mentioned, offensive lineman. Penalty against the Cougars. And also don't want to just glaze over the fact that Tyler Algier, he is literally the heart and soul of this offensive football team. Right. And they just have not been able to get it going. And it could be because of those two offensive linemen that are missing. It could be because Baylor's front is playing so well that somehow, some way, they got to get that figured out for next week. Hall into the end zone. And out of bounds, incomplete. That's Samson Nakua, his brother. Puka Nakua making a couple of catches already. Good looking athlete, 6'4. 200 pounds at a Provo. Yeah, Samson Nakua, he's a transfer from Utah. He actually had a highlight reel touchdown in the back of the end zone against Boise State last week. And he's a guy that they want to get more involved with the offense, but there's only so many spots that they can put out there at a time. Third and 11. 38 17, the Bears in control, under two minutes to go. Into the end zone, back shoulder fade. Caught! Touchdown, Nakua. Puka with the catch. And the BYU Cougars not giving up here. Look at this, guys. There's no discussion about whether this is a touchdown or not. Puka Nakua is a certified star. They said he's been emerging. They love the way he works. His brothers speak volumes about him. And right here, he doesn't just get one foot in. He secures the catch and gets one, two, touchdown BYU putting on some ports on the board here at the end but man maybe they should have just been throwing it to Puka Nakua the whole game wow, they got some guys at the receiver position first touchdown of the season for Nakua fourth of his career no quit in their game today yeah not at all and this is a true testament of the type of team they are and the leadership that they have they're never going to quit they're going to fight to the very end no matter what Extra point is good. Number two minutes to go. 
14 point deficit for the Cougars. Hey, Robert, you it's homecoming. Seen a lot of old friends and faces here. We saw that NBA promo a minute ago. Is, is Baylor a basketball school or football oh, school? Oh, come <laughs> on, man. Look at this dude. You just saw right there Puka Nakua got a career high receiving yards. And he wants to throw that out there. Is Baylor a basketball school or a football school? Let's just say Baylor uh, has done a nice job right. of rising the level of all of their programs. Okay, that's, that's so wonderfully down the middle. I love you for it. You know, you. Yeah, that's, that's A.D. Great. Mack Rhodes and <laughs> President Livingstone, they have come here and Help take Baylor right not just back to where it was but have continued to raise the level yeah and uh, Scott Drew coach right. I remember coach when it was Aaron Bruce and those guys out there balling and he came wow. here and he said one day we're gonna win a national championship and they did that last year and uh, that was really cool and congratulations partner sincerely on being able to be inducted into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame apparently coming Baylor, up in March I was gonna say apparently Baylor's also a dancing school look at my guy right here <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that dance is called, but he's happy that the Bears are winning. He's trying to do the, the new dance is the woo, you know, pop smoke. Oh. Congratulations, by the way. I appreciate on your that, man. On your impending induction. I believe that is a direct reflection of my parents and, and all of the hard work they put into me and my, my uh, two older sisters. So that's an award for them, and I'm glad that I can make them proud. I've had an opportunity to meet dad last week and mom this week, man. I'm, I'm getting the whole family. I love it. Part of it now, whether you like it or not. That's and here's true. a look at the class of athletes going in. Bob Beeman, Chris Bosch, Manu Ginobili. And there's my guy, Robert Griffin III. Tony Parker of the Spurs, Carly Patterson Caldwell, Michael Renfro, Michael Strahan, Bob Beeman. 29 two and a quarter inches on the long jump, right? Yes, Bob Beeman. Not, not a lot of people know that, but I can <laughs> tell you right now, I will be at this ceremony with a pen and a piece of paper getting all types of autographs because these guys are phenomenal. And it's uh, it's really an honor. It's an honor to be able to go into the Hall of Fame with these guys. Uh, just speechless, man. You asked me about the statue earlier. It's just it's one of those things that you don't appreciate until you get there. And uh, I'm very thankful. Baylor in the victory formation. How many Hall of Fames are you in, man? Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> is, Listen. Is there, a, is there a cap on that? Because you you got your name on a lot of things around man, one, here. One of these days, Mark Jones, folks, broadcast. Folks, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to catch your vapors here hey, in man. Baylor, man. I'm just, just riding on those vapors, boy. It's been fun, though. This and has been a lot of fun. It, it, it's been a nice homecoming week, getting out am, amongst the people here in Waco, Texas. And, you know, I... I gave back my workout with that chicken fried steak yesterday and the yeah. food and cookies they brought us today and Listen, what a great you, time. When you come to Texas, <laughs> they always say everything's bigger in Texas and they also mean you. You're yeah. going to get bigger when you come to Texas yeah. eat that chicken fried steak yeah. and all them greasy burgers. But yeah. guess what? I only ate once yesterday because the meal was way too big. <laughs> <laughs> Under a minute to go and uh, BYU going to suffer their second consecutive loss of the season. And it's interesting. I, I, I looked at this game and you try and characterize its importance, Robert. It's a midseason non conference game. And what does it do for Baylor? Because it doesn't, you know, give them a leg up in the Big 12 standings and BYU, of course, an independent. It's just another test. You got two five and one football teams that come in here and they're trying to say who is going to be the better team. BYU is trying to show the preview of the Big 12 and I think the Baylor Bears passed another test today right. and uh, I think the fans are happy. I think BYU got a test of Big 12 football and they'll walk away from this knowing just how physical it is and then the adjustments that they have to make in order to compete and win the rest of the year. Well, that'll do it. 38 24 Dave Aranda's team notches its sixth win of the year against one defeat. The final score 38 to 24. Stay tuned for College Football Scoreboard, followed by Alabama and Mississippi State. For Quint Kessenick, Robert Griffin III, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from the house that Robert Griffin III built. We check in with the studio now.